Hi, welcome to another edition of STEM with Red Bank Library. We're gonna get ready for Earth Day, which happens every April. And in Earth Day, you reduce, reuse, and recycle materials you have around your house instead of just throwing them away and discarding them to make piles of trash that can't necessarily disintegrate itself. So today, we're gonna to learn a couple things. We're gonna talk about paper and cardboard, both of which are recyclable. For the first step, we're going to talk about cardboard boxes. And Ms. Sierra, our children's librarian, has had some awesome past programs at the library with gigantic cardboard boxes donated by some appliances and furniture stores in our town where you get to come and big build forts out of them. So you can use different materials to adhere your cardboard boxes together, like a packing tape. And Sierra actually has these special plastic screws and bolts now that you can actually use with cardboard. But you don't need anything quite that fancy. You can just use some paper, some foil, some tape, and some other things that you have around your house. We're going to use our imagination today through a book called Not a Box. Many of you played with cardboard boxes since you were very young. And if you have a young brother or sister at home, you might know that sometimes when they're opening a present, the box is more exciting than what's actually in it. So we're gonna watch Not a Box, an animation somebody did from Antoinette Cordes's book and made it into a computer animation, which means it has moving parts to it. Enjoy watching it and seeing how creative the character is with making things out of boxes and insisting his creation is not a box. Why are you sitting in a box? It's not a box. It's a race car. What are you doing on top of that box? It's not a box. It's climbing a mountain peak. Why are you squirting the box? I said it's not a box. Oh, it's a building, a tall skyscraper on fire. Now you're wearing a box? This is not a box. It's a robot. Are you still standing around in that box? It's not, 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 not a box. Well, what is it then? It's my not a box. Hmm. So I hope you got some good ideas for how to create boxes into different things. One of my favorite things as a children's librarian in my previous job was I took a big cardboard box. I didn't paint it, I didn't color it, I didn't cover it with anything. Because all I did was cut out little rectangular slits in the front of the box. And then I had the back open where kids could crawl in. I stacked a pile of picture books, of nonfiction books all about animals in it. So the kids could go in, look at one of the pictures, and then pretend to be the animal, make the animal noise. So the box was actually my zoo cage. And I had it for years and years, and the kids absolutely loved it. It was such a simple, simple project to do.
So be creative and have fun with your boxes. And if you'd like to take a picture of it and email it to the library or post it on Facebook, we'd be happy to share it with others. Hopefully the library will be open sometime this year so that you can come back in and build gigantic forts with friends. But for the time being, let's transition to talking about another kind of paper, and that is an index card. An index card is just a small piece of hard paper, like cardstock, so it's thicker than regular printer paper, and it's usually about three inches by five inches. We're going to learn in under a minute how to take this index card and fit our, at least our head, if not our whole body, through the center of it. Amazing. It sounds like it can't be done, but it is possible. So we're going to watch the video twice because it is so very, very quick. And then I will model for you how to cut this index card so that your body can fit through it without using tape, without using glue. Here we go. Okay, I have to remember how to unshare this. Give me a second. Here we go. Safety glasses, not necessary, but definitely some adult supervision since you're using scissors. I'm going to narrate through this because there is no talking. You're folding the note card in half the long way, or what you may call the hot dog way, cutting each side, but not all the way through, and then cutting across the middle bridge area, folding the card back in half again, and then you're gonna be cutting the opposite sides almost all the way through, but not to the edges. It's kind of like when you make a fan, and then you pull it apart, and now you can actually have a long, chain that is one piece. Oh my goodness, he's an adult and he's fitting himself through the entire index card. And that's how you can fit yourself through the middle of an index card. Brought to us by Steve Spangler Science. Let's watch it one more time since that was so super quick. Okay, look closely. Scissors and the index card. If you don't have an index card, you can cut a piece of construction paper about that size, fold it in half the long way. Notice he's cutting on the folded edge, not the open edge. And now he's gonna cut across the bridge in the middle, fold it in half one more time, and start cutting from the opposite ends as the previous cut. The narrower you make your cuts, the longer your chain will be. Open it up, pull gently so it doesn't rip, and you have your successful index card and how to fit yourself through the middle of it. Now I'm going to show you in slow motion how to do it. Thanks for joining us. Hi, I'm back. I'm going to do that a little bit slower since the demonstration was so very, very quick. I'm taking my index card, I'm folding it in half. And I'm going to take my scissors. I find kids scissors work better than adult scissors actually cutting the edge, but not all the way through. As you can see, it didn't go all the way to the tippy top. I left a little part attached right there. Doing the same thing to the other side. And then I'm gonna open it up. I'm not gonna cut those two edges that I just made. I'm just cutting the middle part of the bridge across. Okay, easy peasy so far. Fold it. Now, since this side started from the top, I'm gonna to start this next cut from the bottom and that's kind of important so you don't fall apart. So I did a cut like that. I'm gonna turn it over almost like making a fan. I'm gonna continue to cut across but not all the way through the index card. And this actually takes about a minute or two to do that. And you'll be simply amazed if you can't fit yourself through it, like I'm a bigger adult, so I can't fit my whole body through it, but I can't fit my head through it. You might try saying to somebody, can you fit your stuffed animal through the center of an index card? And this is a good challenge to do with family and friends, maybe when you get together for a party or an event. And let's see, let's do that 
so close that I'm not positive this is gonna work this time because at the end I ran a little bit short of space. But I'm gonna pull this open very, very gently. And you can see this happening here, just like on the video. And now I have my index card and I can clearly fit it over my head. Ta-da! I do hope you like that demonstration. And the last thing I wanna show you happened back in 2012 with a boy who was probably about your age. He was actually nine years old and he was a little bored on his summer vacation, which he spent with his dad in East Los Angeles at his dad's auto parts store. And he was looking for something to do and dad had a ton of boxes around. So his name is Kane and actually he's famous now for creating Kane's Arcade. And that also spawned an international cardboard global challenge, which they do almost every year. And the last one was this past October where they had about 2 million people participate with creating things out of cardboard across 80 different countries of the world. So he inspired a global act. We're gonna watch King's Arcade in just a moment. And here we go. I'm going to share the screen again. And you can watch many different uh, entries of Kane on YouTube with your parents' permission. It's absolutely fascinating and inspiring. Oh, let's go back to the beginning. Sorry, my bad. Let's start one more time here. I was started a little bit early. Called Kane's Arcade. It opens on weekends only, and it's really cheap. Kane does not pass by a K without stopping in. He loves chickens, playing games. He loves prizes. So it was only natural for him to build his own arcade. He loves to see how things are built. He takes all his toys apart to see how they work. He can't put them back together, but he takes them apart. Kane spent summer vacation coming to work with me. We sell all parts in East LA. My dad has a box in back there. He ship parts out. So I cut them up. I make my arcade games out of it. My first game I made. The basketball hoop I got at Shady's Pizza, and it's really cool. He taped it onto a box, and he was offering people chances to play for like a nickel. He started from that little game, and little by little, they started getting fancier and fancier, and eventually he took over the whole store. I met Kane randomly. I had to get a door handle for my 96 Corolla. I pulled into this used auto parts store and I just came across this elaborate cardboard arcade. I asked him how much it was to play. He's like, for one dollar you get four turns, but for two dollars you get a fun pass. Cool. How many turns do you get a fun pass? You get 500 turns for a fun pass. Wow. I got a fun pass. I made this slim pass like expires in one month and you get 500 plays on any of these games. It was a great deal. I started making in my office. I have like a speaker and the other side I can talk through. I got tokens, my business cards, fun packers, and prizes. The first prizes, I used my old toys, like the cards were my own toys. I used to like Hot Wheels when I was little. I worked in the back office and it kept them out of my hair all summer. He would work on the arcade, I'd work on eBay. My next game I built was a soccer game. First of all, I didn't have no goalies. People said it was too easy. So I bought army goalies and those had blockers. I thought, is it easy now? It's pretty hard. So you get two tickets to make it in here. I'll give it a four star hard game, challenging game. Four star. One day, Kane tells me, Dad, I want to buy a claw machine. I said, why don't you just build it? So he got an S-hook, put a piece of yarn on it, and then put a little track on top of the box. And I said, what the heck? He figured out how to make a claw machine with a string and a hook. Here's some sunglasses. These are the glasses that I like the most. Store sunglasses. He bought a calculator to put on every arcade game. And I go, what's that for? The calculator's right here for security to see if it's a real fun pass or not. 
on the back the book that has the crazy number. So when it goes here, you have to turn around and put a pin number in it. And you push a check mark button and the big number comes out. That's how you know the rope won't pass. My dad started the business in 1955. We have used auto parts. Most of our business has gone online because we really don't get the walk up traffic like we used to. So Kane's chance of getting one customer is pretty hard. Kane's always waiting in front, sitting on his little chair and trying to convince people to play, but not too much luck. He's got Kane grand opening. But he never gets discouraged. He's always sweeping up and dusting off the games, waiting for customers. He only wears a shirt on Saturdays and Sundays when he comes to open up his arcade. And he's really proud of his shirt because he thought it up and he designed it. When Kane got back to school from vacation, he started telling everybody he had an arcade. And nobody believed him. So he won't wear his shirt to school because he's afraid that kids might tease him about it. You know, he told them, hey, I got my own arcade. And they go, yeah, yeah, sure. Well, one day, my secretary comes running into the office. George, you never believe it. Somebody's playing Kane's arcade. And I go, no way. So I was looking through the security camera, watching them. I'm playing like miniature soccer, miniature basketball. And then when he'd score a point, he would crawl into the box and he pulls out these little tickets out of the side of the cardboard. Like real arcade game tickets come from the bottom. And I was like, this kid's a genius. Devon came back one day when Kane wasn't here and he told me, do you mind if I make a short film about King's Arcade? And I said, well, actually, it's kind of like a little joke around here because you're his only customer. I was blown away. King's only sold one fun pass. Like, the fun pass is an awesome deal. So Nirvana said, well, what if I can get a couple customers? And I said, that would make his day. If you can get him one customer, he'll be happy. And at that point, we hatched a plan to invite everybody in LA to come play King's Arcade. The idea was to do a surprise flash mob at Kane's Arcade on Sunday afternoon. And I'm thinking, who's going to come down to a junkyard Sunday afternoon, East L.A.? Who's really going to show up? Then I made a little Facebook event, which a friend posted on Hidden L.A., which has over 230,000 fans. And all of a sudden, it just started going viral. And their mom put it over the Internet. And all of a sudden, within an hour, we had NBC News here. Then I hit the front page of Reddit which is like being on the front page of the internet. I started reading the comments. I wish I could be there. I, I live in New York. I wish I could be there. I live in Europe. And I'm like, wow, it was getting big. The plan is I'm going to take Kane to shake his pizza. We're going to play some arcade games. We're going to eat lunch while their boss sets up a big surprise party. Kane has no idea what we're doing. And when we get back, he's had the biggest surprise of his life. And the idea is just to get as many people as we can to come out of Kane's Arcade and just make his day. Kane's dying to have one customer show up to his arcade. So Kane is going to be the most surprised little boy in the whole wide world. Hey, you ready? <laughs> Hey, Kane, can we go home already today? We had no customers today. No. No? Come on. Yeah, it's tired. No can do. No can do. We're back, Kane. Wow. What's going on over here? <laughs> huh? We finally got some customers here. Okay. <laughs> 
Hi, everybody. This is Kane. Kane, this is everybody. All these people came here to play your arcade. Did you know they were coming? No. Are you ready to run your arcade? Yeah. All right. What did you guys come here to do? We came to play! Welcome to Kane's Arcade, man. Play <laughs> But the egg could also be for auto parts Cause these pop shops where it's made And the odd gotta be for imagination Which kids got a lot And the end ought to be noggin Where the idea first got thought But then the E Oh yes the E Oh yes the E Oh yes the E Well the E's gotta be for everybody Yes you Cause everybody's who's invited Come on down and play If you got the plug to try your luck Come on down to Kane's Arcade Oh, Kane's Arcade. Oh, Kane's Arcade. It's the best cardboard arcade ever been made. Grab yourself a fun pass and y'all come on down and play. If you got the plug, try your luck. Get on down to Kane's Arcade. Oh my goodness, that is so inspiring. I showed a couple of people and they've been making their own miniature arcade games. And if you'd like to do the same, we would love to have it at the Red Bank Public Library for all the children who visit us to have a chance to play too. Thanks for joining us for this month's STEM program and keep being curious. See you next time. Bye-bye.